In this quick tip, I'll walk you through the Insonic ASR10's macro feature. For the best experience, I recommend watching the clip on a larger display, such as a TV, laptop, etc. Put the clip in full screen mode and set the resolution to 1080p via the settings widget down on the bottom right. If you learn something new, hit like, feel free to share, and to be notified of new quick tips, click subscribe and activate the bell. For those after drum kits and sounds for classic samplers, check out the Tone Lab store and browse ready-made sample packs that you can download directly into your MPC, SB1200 or ASR. I'll leave the link in the description below. And for anyone on Instagram, drop by for a look at Tone Lab. This clip is part of a much larger series you can find over on the parent channel, which I'll leave links to below. Macros are a feature on the ASR that are more or less like shortcuts to files and or folders, aka directories, generally on SCSI storage devices. You can run a macro to jump to specific files or directories on storage devices that the ASR can access, which comes in really handy in the all too common scenario where you have directories within directories within directories that requires maybe a dozen or more keystrokes to locate files or folders deep within your directory structure. And so by customizing your own shortcuts, you can store up to 28 of your favorite or most frequented locations in one handy macro file that you can save, for example, in the root directory of your main storage device. So that when your ASR boots up, you can quickly access your favorite directories or files across any of your storage devices and in just two or three button presses. For example, I'll run the macro shortcut that loads the directory on the floppy drive by holding down load and pressing one via the keypad, then let go of the load button. And then I could run the shortcut to take me to the root directory of my SCSI device, again by holding down load and keying in the number I set, 11, and letting go of load. Or I could even use the macro shortcut to take me to the Tone Lab bank file that can load the collection of classic drum machine kits available from the Tone Lab store, again by holding down load and keying in my shortcut, 12. And without any fuss at all, I can just load that by hitting enter. As you might be able to see, it works more or less much like an old phone with speed dial, where you hold down the load button, then dial in your macro number, 1 through 28, via the numeric keypad. Then when you release the load button, the ASR will load or jump to whichever file or directory you assigned to that macro number. Any existing macro files are visible when browsing directories via load mode and system category. And just like browsing or loading any other type of file on the ASR, you can browse using both vertical arrow keys and data entry slider. Then hit the enter button to load any particular macro you like. I should mention though, macro files, once loaded, replace any previous macro file and the shortcuts within it. To create your own macro shortcut, locate a file or directory you'd like to make into a shortcut slash favorite, hold down the load button, then via the keypad, enter a number between one and 28, followed by the enter button, then let go of the load button. Once you've done that, I'd suggest naming and saving your macro file via the command mode system category, then browse to the save macro command. Hit enter, then using the arrow keys and data entry slider, dial in a meaningful name. That is, unless you'd prefer to overwrite the original. Either way, enter again to save. You could hypothetically store several macro files in the root directory of your hard drive, or perhaps somewhere else. Just keep in mind, if you make a shortcut to the name of a directory rather than a file inside, then you'll have to hit the enter button on the directory to dive in. In the event a shortcut points to a file or directory that no longer exists, then the macro file 
will just return its file number in the display. There's a few caveats to be aware of. If you've just formatted a SCSI device, a default macro will be automatically generated in the root directory labelled macro file 1 with a file number of 5. Now, any macro file in the root directory with a file number of 5 will be automatically loaded on PowerUp, which paves the way for you to have a situation where you could load your own default bank of instruments with just two or three keystrokes, like this. One thing to be mindful of is the default slash factory macro file is pre-configured to Insonic's specification. So before you go guns blazing, it might be a good idea to specifically configure and store your own macro file. Otherwise, you'll be running the factory macro shortcuts. Speaking of factory macros, I'll just quickly demonstrate the factory defaults. Load and macro 1 will jump to the floppy drive. Then holding down load and 2 will jump to the factory sounds SCSI directory. Load and 3 will jump to my sounds SCSI directory. Load and 5 will jump to the factory sequences SCSI directory. And last but not least, load and 0 will jump to the location of the current macro file loaded in the ASR's memory. It's worth mentioning that 0 is a system reserved shortcut. Like a homing pigeon, running the 0 macro always returns you to the location of the macro currently in effect. I'll leave a list of these in the description below, but feel free to replace these numbers if you prefer using single digit macro numbers. Another cool trick is if your edit mode system category MIDI in page is set to multi or mono B, sending a program change into the ASR can load banks or instruments into instrument tracks. To do that, press the load button so it's flashing, then send the ASR a program change value that matches the instrument file number and send that number over the same MIDI channel used by whichever particular track you'd like to load into. Visit the edit mode track category, multi in MIDI channel page to review and set those channels accordingly. Similarly, to load a bank file, put the ASR into the flashing load mode and send the ASR a program change value that matches the bank file number. When a program change is received, the ASR will load the corresponding file number from the currently active directory on the currently active storage device. Just be mindful that, in some cases, you may want to run a preliminary macro to jump to a particular directory location before running a macro that loads files from it, which is also something that can be done from an external sequencer as incoming program changes numbered 101 through 128 will trigger macros 1 through 28. Just keep in mind, some devices or applications may need you to increase the program change value by one, as some of them have an offset due to the fact that they start at zero rather than one. There's more quick tips just like this here on the channel, plus more comprehensive tutorials over on the parent channel at ToneLab. If you found that useful, hit like, share, and for upcoming quick tip notifications, hit subscribe and ding the bell. Thanks for watching and bye for now.